Welcome to Conversations on the Coast, the Bay Area's premier author interview program. And today we have something quite different. My guest is an old friend. His name is Peter Barron. We've known each other for some 32 years now, the way I count. Peter, I don't know whether you're there. We work together, Peter and I, on marketing and advertising at the Sierra Club Books. And we worked frequently on books by Galen Rowell. And that's what we want to talk about today. The book is called California the Beautiful, Spirit in Place, photographs by Galen Rowell, edited by Peter Barron, and published by Welcome Books. Thanks for stopping by. My pleasure, Jim. You know, uh, Galen is a local guy, or he was a local guy, a Berkeley boy. Bay Area native, uh, born in Berkeley, went to Berkeley High. Um, got out of high school and set up a, a speed shop on Solano Avenue. A that what? was his first career. A speed? Yeah, to s- soup up your car and make it oh, faster. Oh, that kind of speed. Oh. Right. right. All right. Okay. He, he got into full-time photography about 1972, somewhere in there. And in 73, he uh, scored, I think is the word we might use, a National Geographic cover assignment. And after that, he was kind of on his way. He was off and running. Um, He had more than 100 first ascents as a mountaineer by the age of 30. My goodness. And that meant that as a photographer, he could go where other photographers couldn't go and get pictures that they couldn't get. With with angles, too, that they could never achieve. With angles that they couldn't achieve. My goodness. And and that was at a relatively early age. At, yeah. at, at one point, he uh, achieved a National Science Foundation Artist and Writers Grant, and that was to photograph the Antarctica. Was, was there a book in that, Peter? I don't remember. The University of California Press did uh, Poles Apart, which was uh, both the Ar- Arctic and the Antarctic. Uh-huh. But, and both... Pictures were all, all from, uh, from, from Galen. Yeah, pictures from Galen. Wow. He, he, it was often, uh, he often went to Antarctica on different scientific expeditions. I remember one time I was having dinner at his house, and uh, he had a tray on his coffee table filled with knickknacks from all over the world. <laughs> and I picked up a re- really odd-looking stone, and I said, where'd you get this? And he said, um, Mount Erebus in Antarctica. Oh, for crying out loud. Wow. That's an extinct <laughs> volcano. And he told you to put it down. Uh, right. He said, <laughs> be sure and... <laughs> Leave it there. <laughs> Leave it there. <laughs> Summarizing his uh, career, uh, he did something like 18 photographic works. Major Photograph- works. Major works. Major works. And he had a couple of bestsellers, among them one called Bay Area Wild. Yes, I was the publisher of that book, and... Uh, we sold. Uh, we made the Bay Area bestseller list and uh-huh. sold uh, in both editions. I think something like a hundred thousand copies. Oh, that's great! That's great. And then there was a book that was also a bestseller of sorts called My Tibet. That was the University of California Press. Oh. That was a collaboration with the Dalai Lama. With the Dalai Lama. Right. The text was by the Dalai Lama, and the photos were by Galen Rao. When, when Galen died... Oh, wait, just stop there a minute. And yes. <clears throat> see if you can answer this question. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. What kind of guy, person, author, man, gets the Dalai Lama as his co-author? How do you do that? What, what, what do you have to be, do you think? In this case, I think he was known as a great friend of Tibet. Um, when he died, the Tibetan government in exile said, uh, Tibet has lost a great friend. Now, there was a, a Galen and Barbara Rao fund for Tibet mm-hmm. that they set up. Mm-hmm. Uh, he brought uh, worldwide uh, recognition to the plight of the Tibetans and uh, their um, cultural heritage. Um, and I think he was very unassuming and down to earth. 
uh, as a as a person as a uh, you know his character was such that I think the Dalai Lama would probably feel very at home with him. Yeah, yeah. No, that's the way I would. And I didn't spend that much time with him, but the few times that I was with him around him when he was doing things, I I would use the the phrase unassuming. You know, he did what he did. <clears throat> he did it well. He he had a kind of modesty about him. I thought. And he was very encouraging of uh, young photographers and young climbers and uh, very positive. So he, he was a very positive force in his, in his world. And he was taken from us uh, in 2002 <clears throat> in, a, in, a, in a plane crash. Yes, this was, uh, he was on a National Geographic expedition in Asia mm -hmm. where he was, uh, I believe, um, doing a census of uh, seals. A census of seals. Yeah, to see how, yeah. how the seals were faring as a population. Let's, let's hold up on that. We've got to take a break. <clears throat> and some people out there are saying, enough on Rao. Let's get to the book. We'll take care of all of those people when we come back. You're listening to Conversations on the Coast with Jim Foster. Follow us on Twitter at Jim Foster COC or send an email to jimfostercoc at gmail.com. California the Beautiful, Spirit and Place, photographs by Galen Rao, edited by Peter Barron, who's been good enough to come by and chat with us about this beautiful book. And the publisher is Welcome Books. When his California images were first published <clears throat> in a previous version of this book two months after his death, the Los Angeles Times wrote, Galen Rao, who ranks behind Ansel Adams and ahead of just about everybody else among the visual chroniclers of California, is in all his color-drenched, wide-angled, Sierra-cherishing glory here. And that's a very apt description of this book, Peter. Very apt description. The, the love that he has for the landscape that he's shooting is clear in almost every picture. Well, he used to say, I've been all over the world and photographed every wild place, but the number one place for me is California. Yeah, yeah. Let's get back to the story about his, his last expedition. Well, he was, uh, he was on a National Geographic expedition, and they were, I believe, um, taking a census of, of seals. Um, when he met his wife, Barbara, who also was a photographer. Mm -hmm. And by the way, both of them were, were very excellent pilots in their own, you know, they would take aerial f photographs. Uh, they met in Alaska, where Galen was teaching a, a workshop. Barbara had come up from the States. Galen had come down from Asia. They met in Alaska. They finished the workshop. They wanted to go home. They could have waited overnight Mm -hmm. and taken a commercial plane or they could have chartered a private plane and gotten there to sleep in their own beds and that's what they chose to do and uh, that plane crashed in right outside right near their home in um, Bishop in Bishop California uh, in the Eastern Sierra and the um, determination was made that it was pilot era so they had evidently misread the altimeter and thought they had another 200 feet when, in yeah. fact, they didn't. How sad. How absolutely sad that is. And he was, you know, young at the time. What, 61? He was 61. He was just, you know, at the full height of his powers. Well, California the Beautiful is something that he's left behind. And as we used to say at marketing meetings, let's get to the package. <laughs> This book has 85 photos plus and about 85 quotes from an extremely wide range of writers. Now, this is all a collaborative effort between you and Galen, both the words and the photographs chosen? Not exactly. Uh, the, uh, the photographs were chosen by myself, Lena Tabori of Welcome, mm -hmm. and Galen. And I chose the, uh, I found the quotations and excerpts from the writers. From the different writers. To match up with the photos. And then did he look at them and say, that's fine? Or? He, he looked at them and approved them. And uh, 
he actually saw an advanced copy of this two weeks before he died, and oh, he, no. he said he, he liked it very much. Well, that's a great memory for you to have, Peter. Yeah, it's kind of amazing. But um, anyway, the quotes were pulled from a variety of sor sources, and some of them are um, uh, California writers. Most of them are California Most writers. Most of them, yeah, yeah. Uh, some of them are California visitors, uh -huh. and some of them are California natives. Theodore Roosevelt, he'd be a visitor. He was a visitor, yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, one of the things that uh, uh, comes up in the uh, jacket copy is, you know, some suggestions, as it were, on, on uh, how to view this, this book. And it, it says, Land of Innovation and Opportunity. California is both dream and reality. And I think that's a theme that's carried out throughout the book, particularly in, in the words and in, his, and in some of the pictures too. So it's, it's trying to, to get a hold of California, really. It's trying to express the concept that California is a symbol of hope and a new life, the land of the second chance. Yeah, yeah. And um, a better life, I think, would be the way to say it. And I guess, you know, you think, well, maybe that's the gold rush influence. People came out here to strike it rich. Mm -hmm. But in fact, if you look at the earliest accounts of the Spanish explorers who made it to California, yeah, um, the first expedition, the Portola expedition, uh, said that they had arrived in a place that was captured in a novel that was written in Spain 20 years before they discovered California. Oh and they goodness. found the place that was in the novel. <laughs> so it's sort of like the first account of California is that of a symbol or a fic fictitious place. Well... We really haven't done what we promised to do, Peter. We haven't gone through the book. And when we return, we promise, don't we, that we'll go through the book a little bit after this break. You're listening to Conversations on the Coast with Jim Foster. Follow us on Twitter at Jim Foster COC or send an email to Jim Foster COC at gmail.com. The book today is California the Beautiful with uh, pictures, photographs, marvelous they are by the late Galen Rao. The editor, Peter Barrett, is here talking to us about it. The publisher is uh, Welcome Books. California is beautiful. Galen Rao was right. It is also threatened. Mining, clear-cutting, oil drilling, and overdevelopment threaten some of our most treasured places. Galen Ryle's pictures remind us of what we need to save, and we need to work harder to do that. I challenge everyone who looks at these amazing pictures to absorb them completely, take a deep breath, move to protect these areas for future generations, and keep California's shining promise. Those are the words of Dan Jacobson from Environment California. And I think a nice way to open our third segment. You know, another way to express what California is, is somewhere in the book, I think, it is a place on the map and a place in the mind. Do you like that? I do. And then there's the comment by uh, what might be called a law firm, Jack Hicks, James Houston, Maxine Hong Kingston, and Al Young. They, their remarks face a picture called Sunset at Pescadero on the San Mateo coast, right down the street from where we are. If El Dorado, they say, is California's first large metaphor, continent's end is the second. In recent years, a third has risen into view as a way of describing this region's place on the map and in the mind, Pacific Rim suggests a circle. The term is geographical, and it also speaks to California's extraordinary cultural mix. How do you like Pacific Rim as a way to think of California, Peter? 
I like it. Uh, it was originally appeared in uh, a book called uh, Pacific Shift uh -huh. by uh, William Irwin Thompson in the early 80s. Uh -huh. And he said that uh, the cultural influence of Europe was waning on the United States and the cultural influence of Asia was gaining. Oh, I see. So this is a way to, to suggest that. That this this is where we are. Well, he he actually talked about a kind of an axis between Tokyo, Sydney, and Los Angeles, but I think that uh, various economic realities of Japan probably made that obsolete. But Pacific Rim cuisine became very <laughs> yeah, common. That's right. That's right. <laughs> following yeah. that, <clears throat> it did. It did. Which was yeah. Pacific Rim fusion, mm -hmm. Mexican. Mixed with uh, Filipino, yeah, mixed Filipino, with, yeah, right. whatever. Now let's wander through the book. Page 130, Wallace Stegner has some things to say. The picture he's opposite is uh, Sierra Wave over Owens Valley near Bishop. And this is an incredible picture. This is a, a, a the sky, and then in the forefront is a river or a pond. And We simply need, says Stegner, that wild country available to us, even if we never do more than drive to its edge and look in. Isn't that great? You don't have to do a lot. Just drive to the edge and look in, for it can be a means of reassuring ourselves of our sanity as creatures, a part of the geography of hope. That was Wallace Stegner's great phrase, the geography of hope, mm -hmm. and preceded... Uh the um, use of the term hope in all the various elections that we've had in the past <laughs> 12 years. Uh, now, on, 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 page, uh, on page 60, uh, I put a note there. This is uh, the words are Ray Bradbury's. And the note that I, that I put there was that I thought it was a marvelous or perfect blend, I think I wrote, <clears throat> of... Uh, comment and picture. The picture is almost all blue with the moon high and uh, uh, two Mustangs standing beneath the moon in the sky. Here, says Ray Bradbury then, is the wonder we would all be. The open mind, the wild heart, the good laugh, the mixed company, the amiable companion, the stalwart lover, and the guiltless cult. I love that. Well, I, I kind of like it, too. Uh, it's one of my favorites. Ray Bradbury wrote a manifesto for Esquire magazine in the 70s uh, about California and about Los Angeles in particular uh -huh. and how it was different than the rest of the country and how Californians were different than the rest of Americans. And that's where this is from. So uh, also, as a note, uh, Galen photo photographed wild horses in quite a variety of places, mm -hmm. including um, the um, plains of Chile. Plains um, of Chile? Chile, down in Chile. <laughs> okay. The uh, I forget what the name of that... Um, I'm, I'm blocking uh, the name yeah. of the, the great plains of Chile. We have to get out of here, and I thought it would be appropriate if we got out of here under a presidential directive, not from Obama, but from Teddy Roosevelt. He says, when I am in California, I am not in the West. I am West of the West. This book, California the Beautiful by Galen Rowell, takes you West of the West, where there's much to see and much to ponder. And we thank Peter Barron for joining us today. This has been Conversations on the Coast, and I'm Jim Foster. Follow us on Twitter at Jim Foster COC or send an email to Jim Foster COC at gmail.com.